today we are going over section A, subsection O of the West African Examination Council Senior Secondary School Certificate Mathematics Examination for Library School. In this section, we're going to be discussing variation. We're going to go over direct, inverse, and joint variation. So let's first of all define, give some basic working definition of what is variation. So direct variation is a variation in which as one quantity increases, the other quantity also increases. An inverse variation is a variation in which as one quantity increases, the other decreases, or as one decreases, the other increases. And a joint variation is a variation in which you can have multiple quantities increasing, I mean, having a direct or inverse relationship. Now, the relationship between the quantity x and y can be expressed as y is equal to kx, where k is a constant. And also, we say that uh, where k equals y or x will be a constant. We can also use proportions to solve direct variation problem because if we say y or x is equal to k, which means that whenever we divide y by x, we have the same value. That value is k. So for inverse variation, the relationship for inverse is written as y is equal to k over x. So in this case, if I multiply both sides by x, I'm going to have k equal to x, y. So the constant here is obtained by multiplying x and y. So when you multiply x by y, you're going to have the same thing for each. So we can use this proportion, we can use this statement here to be able to solve it. The joint variation is something like this, for example. In this variation here, we can say that z, uh, z varies directly as y and inversely as k. So we can solve for this variation constant k by multiplying x by z and dividing by y. So that relationship x z over y one divide equal should be equal to x z for the y two subscript variation. Okay. So we know that our variation relationship must be written as y. Our variation relationship must be written as y equals to k x, and that we can obtain k by doing y over x, and also the relationship y1, x1 should be equal to y2, x2, right? So now let's go over it. Let's read the problem. You see, when y is equal to 10, so let me say that's y1 equals to 10. The x is 2, so that means x1 would be equal to 2. And when, so we should find the value of x, that means x2 is what we don't know when y is equal to 35. So we can use this relationship or we can go ahead and find k using y1 and x1, finding the equation and so I'm going to use the proportion relationship. So it's y1 over x1. So my y1 is 10 over x1, which is 2, should be equal to y2, which is 35, over x2, which we don't know. We can do cross multiplication here. We have 10 x2 equals to 2 times. 35 is 70. So then we have 10 x sub 2 is equal to 70 and divide by 10, divide by 10. So x2 is equal to 7. So there's one way we could do it. We could do it another way. As I do problems, I want to be, be moving between the two different ways of doing them so that you can be familiar with both. Okay. So now we have problem number two. So we think that say x virus inversely. But not just as t, but inversely as the square root of what? t. So let's write that relationship. So this is how we can do it. S varies. So we put that here inversely. So that means it's going to be down. With the square root of what? So square root of t. So we can substitute given values here and find k, and then write a formula for, for s in relationship to k and in relationship to t, and then use that to move on with our problem. That's what we're going to do here. So in this problem, we are told that when s is equal to 6, t is equal to 4. If we substitute that in here, s is equal to 6, we don't know k, but t is what? Four and solve this, we're going to find k. So this is going to be 6 equals to k. The square root of 4 is what? 2. 
A good multiplier of both sides will have k will be equal to 12. So now that we know what k is, that k is equal to 12, we can write this relationship in that in general s is equal to k. What is k? 12 over the square root of what? t. And so given given in the next part of the problem, they want us to find t. That means t is something we don't know when s is equal to what? 8. So let's see if we can do that. Let's replace s with what? 8 equals to 12 over square root of t. And then we can solve this by multiplying here. Yeah, this will give us 8 square root of t will be equal to 12. We divide both sides by 8. Divide both sides by 8. So we're going to have the square root of t is equal to 12 over square root of t will be equal to 12 over 8. Let's see if we can do that on the next slide. Square root of t square root of t is equal to 12 over 8. And then how do we solve a problem like this? We can square both sides to get rid of the square here. First of all, before we do that, we can do that. No, no, I will simplify this first before I do it. So we have the square root of t is equal to 12 over 8. Well, we can simplify that. Divide this by 4, you get 3. Divide this by 4, you're going to have 2. So now we can square this and then square this. So that would cancel. t would be equal to 3 squared over 2 squared. So t would be equal to 9 over what? 4. So in this case, I did not proceed by writing a proportion. I actually wrote a formula and substituted it to find the missing value. That's one way of doing it. Now it's directly, directly proportional. It means the same thing. So let's set it up. Y is directly proportional. So you introduce equal and your constant of proportionality to what? to x. Okay? And so then we can do some things here. Now, so this is the relationship. So now we are told that when y is equal to 3, x is equal to 1 half. So we can use this relationship to find k. So let's go. What is y? 3. We don't know what k is, but we know that x is equal to 1 half. Correct? So how do we solve it? Multiply both sides by 2. So we have 6 equals to k. So now that we know k, our direct variation relationship will be 6y x. So now that we know that's our relationship, we can go to the second part of the problem. Now in the second part of the problem, they want us to find, find y when x is equals to what? 2 third. So we can just use this relationship y is equal to 6, when, and then x is what? 2 thirds. So we're going to have here 12 divided by 3, and that's going to be what? 4. So y would be equal to 4 when x is equal to 2 thirds. So number 4 is a problem of inverse variation. The x values inverse the proportional to y. So we can do the same thing. We can say y is equal to x over k. Sorry, k over x. Or, in fact, I'm going to do this. So y is equal to k over x. And I'm going to say k is equal to the product of x, y. I'm going to say x1, y1 should be equal to x2, y2. That's the approach I'm going to take. So let's see the information that we are getting here. So the first thing we are getting is x1 is 3. The corresponding y value would be y1. y1 is 1 over 2. Then, we did not give us x2. But the y value for that x2, which we want to find, is y2 is going to be 9 over what? 4. So let's put it like this. So x1 is 3 times y1 is 1 over 2 should be equal to x2, which we don't know, times y2, which is 9 over 4, x2. So we multiply here. We're going to have 3 over 2 equals to 9 over 4, x2. 
So let's take that to the next slide. 3 over 2 equals to 9 over 4x2. 3 over 2 equals to 9 over 4x2. And we can, you know, do some playing around here. But we can just divide this by 9 over 4. Divide this by 9 over 4. That will cancel. So we'll say x2 will be equal to 3 over 2 divided by 9 over 4. How do you divide a fraction? It's not x squared, it's x sub 2. x sub 2. So you multiply by the reciprocal. So this times what? 4 over what? 9. That's going to be 12 over 18. That's going to be 2 over what? 3. And so we have that, that when y is equal to 9 over 4, x will be equal to 2 over what? 3. So y varies inversely as this. So let's go. y varies equals inversely. So when I have k over something inversely as what? The cube root of what? x. Cube root. So let's see the information we have. We have here that when y is equal to 4, so that's my y1, x1 will be equal to 27. So we can use this to find k and then write our, 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 our relationship. So let's go. y is equal to 4, we do k over the cube root of 27. The cube root of 27 is 2. Is three, so three. So we multiply it, yeah, but have k will be equal to twelve. Therefore, our relationship will be y equals to twelve over the cube root of what x. So this is our inverse relationship. Now, in the other part of the problem here, they want us to find y when what is y when x is equal to what eight. So let's do some replacement here. So we have 12 over the cube root of 8. What's the cube root of 8? That's 2. So we have 12 over what? 2. And our answer will be what? 6. So when y, when x is equal to 8, y will be equal to 6. So the positive mean proportion between two numbers, say a and b, is given by x equal to the square root of the product of a and b. So the positive mean proportion in this case would be basically square root of 72 times 2. And that's going to be 144. And the square root of 144 is what? 12. So the positive mean proportion between 72 and 2 would be 12. Again, thank you. This has been a production of you. The Foundation for Equity and Excellence in Education in Liberia. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and send us those contributions and donations to help us improve the quality of our product. Send us your feedback at fuelliberia2015 at gmail.com.